CompTIA A plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 3.4. Given a scenario, install and configure motherboards, central processing units, and add-on cards. Encryption. Understanding the distinction between plain text and cipher text is the very first step when venturing into the expansive realm of encryption and its study, termed cryptography. So let's take that first step and begin with a quick look into plain text. Picture yourself jotting down a message to a friend. This message, in its original, readable form, is what we term as plain text. In the realm of IT, plain text is any data or text that has not yet undergone encryption, making it readable by both humans and computers. But here's where the plot thickens. When we aim to safeguard our data or message, especially in the digital domain, we resort to encryption. This encrypted form of our plain text is what we refer to as cipher text. Think of cipher text as a coded message. To the untrained eye, it appears as mere gibberish. Now, please allow me to reiterate and further define this concept. Plain text is data presented in a format that is immediately understandable and accessible. It's in its most basic, unaltered state, free from any form of encryption or coding. This means that there are no protective layers or barriers concealing its content. As for ciphertext, it stands in stark contrast to plain text. It is the result of taking understandable, clear data and transforming it into a format that appears random and nonsensical at first glance. This transformation is achieved through a process called encryption, which employs an encryption key combined with a specific mathematical algorithm in order to jumble the original data. These algorithms rearrange the data in such a way that its original meaning becomes obscured. The primary purpose of this scrambling is to protect the data's integrity and confidentiality. Without the correct decryption key or method, which acts as a sort of digital password or blueprint to reverse the encryption, the ciphered text remains a puzzling array of characters, numbers, and symbols. Only those possessing the right key can revert the cipher text back to its original plain text form. And that brings us to our next topic, the Trusted Platform Module. A Trusted Platform Module, or TPM for short, is a specialized microchip designed to provide hardware-based security functions. It serves as a secure repository for cryptographic keys, passwords, and pens. In simpler terms, Think of TPM as a small, secure vault inside your computer that stores important secrets, ensuring they can't be easily accessed or tampered with by unauthorized users or malicious software. The TPM works in conjunction with the motherboard by being integrated directly onto it or connected via a dedicated header. When the computer boots up, the TPM initializes and performs security functions such as generating and storing encryption keys, verifying the integrity of the boot process, and providing secure storage for sensitive data. It works closely with the computer's firmware and operating system to ensure that only authorized users and software can access critical resources and protects against various forms of attacks, including unauthorized access, tampering, and data theft. One crucial function of a TPM is its ability to store keys for hard drive encryption. When you encrypt your hard drive using technologies like BitLocker on Windows or FileVault on Mac OS, the encryption keys are generated and securely stored within the TPM. These keys are used to encrypt and decrypt data on the hard drive, ensuring that even if someone were to physically access your hard drive, they wouldn't be able to read its contents without the proper decryption key stored in the TPM. This brings me back to one essential fact. The TPM is integrated directly onto the motherboard. Therefore, removing or replacing the motherboard can potentially lead to complications. Since the TPM is a hardware-based security measure tied to the specific hardware configuration of your computer, Changing the motherboard could result in the loss of access to the encrypted data stored on the hard drive. Additionally, the TPM establishes a unique relationship with the specific motherboard it's installed on. 
If you were to replace the motherboard without properly handling the TPM, this too would result in the loss of access to the cryptographic keys stored within the TPM. As a result, you might not be able to decrypt your hard drive and access your data, leading to data loss. Therefore, it's important to take precautions when dealing with systems equipped with a TPM. Before making any changes to the hardware, it's advisable to back up any important data and, if necessary, properly migrate or deactivate the TPM to avoid any potential issues with data access and cryptographic keys. Now, a TPM may excel at bolstering the security of individual devices, but will likely fall short when it comes to meeting the demands of enterprise-level security. In such scenarios, a hardware security module, or HSM for short, is often preferred as an alternative to TPMs. HSMs offer robust security for cryptographic operations and key management, making them ideal for environments requiring high levels of protection and scalability. Unlike TPMs, which are typically integrated into individual devices, HSMs are standalone units providing centralized management and control over cryptographic keys and operations. This feature makes them well-suited for large-scale deployments and stringent security requirements. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.